So um, good evening, everybody. This is an open meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee. It's being uh, conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the COVID-19 virus pandemic. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus, we've been advised and directed to suspend public meetings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all the members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us. MA.us. Com. For this meeting, uh, we are convening by video conference via the Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join and comment. Please note the meeting is being recorded. Some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided to the members of the body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public's encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair knows otherwise. Let me just cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business tonight. Um, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will invite members to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold until you're recognized your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or your computer when you're not speaking, and please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If you wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. And due to the size of my laptop screen, I may not be able to see all members at once. So if someone has raised their hand and I've not noticed, I hereby request that either Tara Bradley or Annie LaCourte Please bring this to my attention. Finally, uh, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Uh, so first, uh, permit me to confirm that all the members and persons on the agenda are present and can hear me. So members, when I call your name, please uh, indicate that you are present. Grant Gibeon. I am here. Jane Blundell. Here. John Ellis. Makaya Healy. Here. Brian Beck. Here. Arif Badaria. Sophie. Here. Jonathan Wallach. Here. Uh, Shailene Crawford. Chris. Daryl Harmer. Here. Annie LaCourt. Annie LaCourt. Oh, maybe she wasn't going to be here. Mm. Alan Jones. Here. George Koser. Here. Bill Keller. Here. Al Tosti. Here. Juan de Nascimento. Here. Christine Deschler. Here. And Dean Carmen is not going to be here tonight. David McKenna. David McKenna is not here. Okay, so let me just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We have 14 members, so we have a quorum. Tara Bradley. Tara, you here? Tara, you're mute. I'm sorry, what was that? I was asking you, Tara Bradley, are you here? I'm here. Sorry, I'm I'm on the phone with Dave right now. Trying to we're trying to get in right now. Yes, I am. Tech support. Okay, I got it. All right. Um, so I would like Charlie, to... John Ellis has joined. John Ellis, thank you. I've uh, also joined Charlie, Shailene. Oh, Shailene. Yep. Thank Hi. You. Sorry. John Ellis and Shailene. Okay. Okay. So um Jonathan Wallach, uh we, in order to complete the um, roll call here, can you introduce the members of the Capital Planning Committee that are here tonight and also um, any 
make any uh, introductory comments that you would like to make? Sure, thank you, Charlie. Uh, hold on. And, and by the way, for new members, uh, Jonathan Wallach is our delegate to the Capital Planning Committee and a member of the Capital Planning Committee. Yes, thank you. Uh, so uh, joining us tonight uh, for a presentation from the Capital Planning Committee are Timur Yanter, who's the chair of the committee, uh, as well as um, Sandy Pooler, um, Phyllis Marshall, Ida Cody, and am I missing anyone? Oh, Kate, Kate Lusion. Um, and uh, uh, Timor will actually do formal introductions of everyone as part of his presentation. And I believe, Timor, um, you want to be able to- Well, which way do we get to that agenda, uh, Jonathan? I just wanted to get the names of the people as we were oh, taking- Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, so do we have all of the members that have- I have Timor, Sandy Pooler, Phyllis, Ida, and, and Kate. Is it Kate Luzian? Correct. Okay. Anyone else? No one else is here. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Has uh, Annie LaCourt ar arrived yet? No. No. And I believe she's. I think she's not going to be here tonight. I think. I no, agree. she's not. I believe she's at the ARB tonight. Okay. I recall there was a. She sent an email about that. Um, okay. So. I'd like to just make a couple of comments to the members. <clears throat> um, we're honored to have the Capital Planning Committee here this evening. Uh, this is a group that puts as much time and effort into their, uh, to their work as the select board or the school committee or finance committee or any other major boards and committees in town. And they have, a, <clears throat> they have a, an enormous impact on our spending and uh, on the efficiency of delivery of services in the town. So please pay attention to the presentation and ask any question you wish after the presentation. There are no foolish questions uh, on this complex subject. And, and Jonathan, I would appreciate it if you would bring up, um, <clears throat> Dean's not here tonight, he wrote an email. He had a couple of questions that he wanted addressed and if you could bring those up later, I'd appreciate it. I certainly will. And also I, I want to point out that Kate Leary um, and Julie Wayman have also joined us. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so um, I mentioned at the last meeting, there's likely going to be a, a special town meeting, um, which may address two issues. Uh, one is this private way betterment question, <clears throat> and the other is a reserve fund. Um, and what to do with the reserve fund from the school enrollment and uh, that, that wasn't used. And um, I think uh, perhaps uh, Sandy Pooler will address that for us at the next meeting. Um, and a communication today that I received from Ida Cody, who happens to be here tonight, indicates that if there's any money left in the reserve fund of any kind on June 30th, it goes into free cash. So that would argue that we have to uh, address that issue at the special town meeting. Um, the third thing I wanted to bring up, and I don't know if, um, Wanda, did you see my email earlier? I don't think so. Okay. Um, so I, I somehow got an email. I don't, considering my political activities, I don't understand why that this occurred, but anything can happen, I suppose. Um, so, um, Representative uh, Catherine Clark sent an email today uh, pointing out that uh, Arlington's public health director, um, Natasha Waden, uh, was a guest, was her guest at the State of the Union address the other night. So, um, I think that's pretty impressive. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we all sort of had a, a virtual shout out for uh, Natasha Waden. And I don't, uh, Sandy, do you, do you have any comments to make about that? Are you familiar with this? 
maybe uh, I am not familiar with that, but I think it's terrific if it's true. Yeah, that's that was my response. Uh, and I guess I'm on uh, Catherine Clark's email list and you're not. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but. Uh, um, oh, yeah. I'm in a different district. Oh, that could be. That could be. OK. Um, well, anyway, please pass on. Uh, the finance committee's congratulations to uh, Natasha. That would be be nice. Oh, I did get the email in my hotmail. Okay. And I did get the Catherine Clark emails in my junk mail. Oh, I've been getting those for a while too. I usually don't read them, but <laughs> so okay. I'll read this one. Okay. Um, so we come to the um, the next. The formal item on the agenda here is the presentation from the Capital Planning Committee. So, Mr. Yantar, turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and uh, just in terms of um, logistics, uh, we would like to present our agenda on the screen. Uh, will we be able to do that? If, um, I believe if we can have Julie Wayman uh, you know, Co-host and projected for us. That would be. I think Tara can arrange that. You should have access to um, to uh, be able to share any one of you individually if you'd like. But I can change someone to co-host if that's needed as well. Nope, looks fine to me. Ready when you guys are. Okay. So again, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thanks all of you for having us. I'm Timur Yantar. I am the chair of the Capital Planning Committee. And I truly hope that our next time that we do this presentation with you, it will be in person. Um, Julie, whenever you're ready to put up the, uh, uh, the deck. Thank you. All right. Um, kicking off with the rendering of our largest capital plan project, which is the DPW renovation. Next slide, please. Uh, to start, here's a list of the attendees tonight from capital planning. Uh, there are eight of us, I believe, currently on the call. And I think that at least one and perhaps all three of the remainder will be joining as well. Um, since we're on Zoom, we all have our names next to our video feeds. Uh, but we'll take a moment to introduce ourselves in alphabetical order as shown here. Um, I guess, Ida, can you start, please? Yeah. Or just say, you know, your role oh. in, in the town. Or <laughs> Hello, the everyone. I'm sorry. Um, my name is Ida Cody, and I'm the town controller. Kate Derry? Yeah, Kate Leary, a committee member. Kate Lucian. I'm Kate Lucian, also a representative from the community. Phyllis. Hi, I'm Phyllis Marshall. I'm the town treasurer collector. Uh, Michael Mason will be joining us at around eight o'clock. Uh, Chris, I don't believe is here yet. Uh, oh, you are. Hello, Chris. Please say hi. Hi, Chris Moore, moderator appointee to the committee. Sandy. Sandy Fuller, Deputy Town Manager and Finance Director. John? Yeah, I'm John Wallach. Uh, I'm the Finance Committee designee to the Capital Planning Committee. As we all know. And Julie? Hi, I'm Julie Wayman. I'm the Management Analyst. Joe Barr is uh, our Recording Secretary, and he may be able to attend depending on he had a work conflict that came up suddenly. OK. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, we have tonight's agenda, a little on who we are and what we do, and then what we're going to be asking you to do. Um, overview of the major issues that have come up this year and that we will expect will be with us for a while. Uh, what the capital plan has achieved or is currently achieving, how it fits into the town budget, uh, some detail on the main uh, recommended expenditures. Uh, first, we talk about sources, since we have substantial additional funds available this year. Then by department, we do in descending order of size within the capital budget, the uses. Uh, some specifics from the treasurer on prior borrowing and on reappropriations. 
And finally, the recommended vote. Next slide, please. And this recap our membership and how each of us came to be on capital planning. Uh, note that we have one vacancy. If you know of anybody who would be interested in a, a uh, capital planning role, uh, but with the exception of John, none of you may do this. Um, we would be uh, always welcome to, to hear a recommendation. Next slide, please. This shows how we divide up the work. We have several subcommittees, um, each of which meets with a few town departments. Okay, um, before I go into the work that we do, let's take a step back uh, as to why are we doing this. Uh, our capital expenditures are for long lasting assets, often costly ones that we must borrow to pay for. Uh, so it naturally leads, leads itself to uh, long-term planning. And by creating a plan, we reduce our, our uncertainty. We also weigh priorities, which is of course necessary to keep in a budget. And by having this dedicated group pay careful attention to these matters, we hope to uh, reassure our citizens and give them confidence about the money that we're spending on their behalf. Next slide, please. Um, for many of you, this is familiar, but I know there's always turnover. So I would just do a refresh around process for new members. Um, we look at the town's year by year budget revenue and then allocate 5% of that for capital expenditures. Uh, note that this is for non exempt spending. Uh, we do not count the exempt spending. And as part of this, uh, what is exempt spending? That's the kind of that we authorize uh, through uh, debt exclusion votes. Currently, the most well known example is the uh, Arlington High School. Um, exempt uh, spending is uh, a separate pool of money paid for by extra taxes uh, for a specific and finite project. So, um, but for non exempt spending, we ask the town's departments when the fiscal year starts in the summer to tell us their requests. And uh, those are for the coming fiscal year, when it begins the following July 1st, as well as for the four fiscal years after that. Uh, these are submitted uh, to the town manager's office through the beginning of September, and our committee begins meeting then. We then, in the subcommittee groups, meet with uh, the department heads to discuss their requests in detail and also with the facilities department regarding the upkeep of the physical plant. Um, questions such as, is it time for a new roof? Uh, we then have each subcommittee present reports to the full committee and we uh, review them, ask questions and approve or not and prioritize the requests. Uh, we also look to sp uh, spending, the, uh, sorry, to balancing the spending of the, um, within the 5% rule, both in the current uh, budget year and over the full five year plan. Um, I want just to note here at the bottom that we, we, have been, uh, we are the representatives now, but we stand on the shoulders of giants uh, and our prior leadership and committee members. Um, the capital plan has been uh, successful and in budget for the last 35 years. Uh, we keep the 5% rule to meet the town's needs, and it also provides, uh, so to speak, guardrails. Uh, so we don't spend too little or too much. Um, we have uh, been using the 5% rule first because it has worked. And it's also in line with what we see in practice in other uh, towns and cities in the Commonwealth. So tonight, next, next slide, please, page eight. Tonight, we're asking you to vote favorable action on our recommended budget and the reappropriation to support our five-year plan, although we only have the current, or sorry, the coming fiscal year, fiscal uh, 23, as being voted on at town meeting. And there's a housekeeping matter to transfer $10,000 from perpetual care to the capital budget. This happens every year. Okay, um, our big picture. Um, as you'll see in detail in a couple of slides, uh, we are once again at 5%, both for the, the coming fiscal year budget and the five-year plan. Um, the fiscal 23 budget is a gross uh, $10.5 million for capital before offsetting um, funds and 9.1 million net after those off offsets. It's roughly in line with where we were last year. Uh, we'll be talking in a few slides about our town's uh, achievements in the capital plan, uh, what we have paid for, are paying for, and intended to pay for. Um, 
sort of editorial here, we uh, considered this year's plan to feel a bit tight. Uh, we are faced with a number of challenges, uh, of course, with the essential one of, of budgeting and the resources. We are also seeing from both departments and uh, residents alike, uh, they're seeking uh, improvements and excellence in what the town delivers and costs are escalating. Um, even before uh, the last couple of years, we've been seeing uh, increased regulations, for example, uh, that were just driving up the cost of um, playgrounds, of um, a school refits, that kind of thing. Now, on top of that, we have inflation and supply chain issues to worry about too. Um, also, we have been uh, working to try to get ahead of maintenance. Um, the idea being that uh, a stitch in time saves nine, so long-term savings, but it can still be expensive to get ahead of it. We're looking at, uh, at, at schools, uh, at roads, uh, at recreation, uh, sort of a fix it first philosophy, um, uh, address safety issues, keep it in the state of good repair. Um, upgrades are nice to have, but really focus on keeping things chugging along. Um, the big news that's different this year from pre previous years is the uh, outside benefit of ARPA, federal funds, which we'll be discussing more later. Um, but if we turn to the next slide, this year, so page 10, thank you. This year, we'll, we're using ARPA to cover parts of the cost of our recreation and also of uh, part of the cost of sc uh, school and town HVAC. Uh, in order to make it all fit, we had, uh, in the process of doing all of our reviews, we were also uh, prioritizing, doing some rankings of the different uh, requests. Um, and that allowed us to efficiently make reductions uh, in some cases cutting, in some cases reducing, in some cases pushing items further out in the plan. Uh, these were all done in coordination with the town manager's office and through them with the department. So there were so it was a dynamic process, a lot of back and forth. Some of the main things that we had to uh, economize on. Uh, there was a costly request for a review of the poet's corner field, and um, the current plan is for that to be funded outside the plan. We're looking to the Belmont Hill School, a private school over in Belmont, that uh, proposes to be a major user of the field to cover um, the vast majority of this cost. There were other uh, recreation projects that were pushed out, some of which may receive ARPA funds. In the library sphere, um, there are requests to uh, do a full uh, redo of the Fox Library and a substantial renovation to Robbins. Um, these are costly projects. Uh, they're hard to fit into the plan. Certainly can't do two at the same time. Um, at present, we have pushed the Fox to be um, sort of on deck, just, at, just past the, the, uh, the five-year plan. And Robbins is on indefinite hold. Um, as part of this, though, we uh, decided that it was important for us to, rather than just have the, the um, prospect of not um, having a, a clear answer for, for libraries to do a, a study on um, large projects and when we believe that given our current burden, we'll be able to afford the next large one, which basically involves you know, a building. Um, DPW, uh, so apart from the DPW site, uh, the DPW ask is around uh, roads, sidewalks, uh, a lot of vehicles and so forth. Um, particularly when it came to roads and sidewalks, we couldn't quite cover their initial ask. Um, we did uh, dedicate ourselves to at least raising the amount from last year. So we have a slight increase year over year. Um, we are not yet hitting the $2 million target that we have set for uh, annual uh, uh, expense, expenditure on roads. Um, and we can come back to that in a little bit about why that's a target. Um, there were some requests for new programs around school maintenance that had to be sharply scaled back, and some that uh, didn't really seem like capital were turned down, such as window washing or painting. Um, so there, there's uh, sort of our summary. Um, I'd like to pause here for any questions that I can answer. I see some hands. Charlie, do you want to call on people? Alan Jones. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Timur, I was wondering, could you elaborate a little bit on the Belmont Hills School involvement in Poets Corner? You know, what, what do they get out of it? What do we get out of it? What's the ongoing obligation? Sandy, do you have a little bit more on that, please? First, I would say it's all still in discussion, so nothing has been decided yet. Second, I would say that uh, Belmont Hill uh, has indicated an interest in paying for renovating the field, uh, maybe even putting in a turf field with our guaranteeing them access to that field during certain times of the day when their students could, could use the field and at other times uh, of the days and weekends uh, when Arlington residents could use it. Uh, none of that has been put down as anything uh, as a final decision. So uh, that's about as much detail as I can tell you at this point, uh, but generally that is the idea. Okay, has, has anything like that been done with any other facility in town? Not that I'm aware, uh, no. Okay. Um, just. <laughs> trying to think of what problems might arise. Thank you. John Ellis. John, did you have your hand up? I, I did, that, but I took it down because of Alan's question. I guess the follow-up would be, uh, th there's that parking lot, which I think is owned by the Catholic Church. Is that part of this discussion or uh, is that outside the scope? Um, I... I'm not sure if any of the church land is part of the discussion. I would say from my understanding that all of, not all of that parking lot is part of the new park plan, but there may be certain parts that are adjacent that may be, but frankly, I have not personally been involved in this discussion, so I do not know the answer. Okay, thanks. Makaya? Um, I apologize for my um, computer fan. It's been working too hard today. Um, I wanted to know a little bit about the the um, your measurements, like how you prioritize your projects. Um, I know it's probably a broad question, but like, what are your priority measurements when it? Um, and in particular, I'm thinking about like when it comes to like DPW replacement of vehicles. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that safe building safety is part of it, but um, like, how do you, how do you prioritize your, the projects? Yeah, there, there are a number of things going on there. Um, we, it's a combination of our own priorities and priorities from the department. So that we ask them to tell us what they need most, um, which is great at uh, helping order within their asks. It's a little harder at ordering across asks. Um, in addition to that, we asked them to uh, sort of check off a couple of different boxes in terms of what is the benefit of this um, capital uh, expenditure, such as, is it uh, safety? Is it required by law? Is it uh, extending the life of the, of the useful, uh, useful life of the item, et cetera? Um, and then it's really uh, also based on our um, hearing of the, uh, the request, the, explanation, justification that the um, department heads um, through our subcommittee reports have, are conveying to us. Um, there is probably some level of subject subjectiveness to that, uh, but that's, you know, we're trying to use our best judgment as the town's capital experts. Thank you, Timor. Um, Shailene Crawford, please. Yes, hi, um, it's a similar question to the earlier ones about Poets Corner. Um, could you just quickly recap what you said about how it's funded outside the plan? And then also, um, I'm just wondering if the, uh, I think it's Arlington Youth Baseball, you know, our local little league, um, if you've let people there know that that field will be out of use, because I think that's primarily a baseball field, right? Um, I'm just wondering how it'll impact the town's um, youth athletics. Okay, so, um... 
outside of plans really what we're looking at is that Belmont Hill was proposing to pay for um, most of the cost and we didn't have a, uh, as Sandy indicated, if not in any case, you know, reach the final decision here. So we don't have a number for how much would be left for the plan to pick up. The original number that we were looking at from the rec department for this entire uh, redo was um, quite daunting. It was $3.2 million, uh, which is quite hard to fit into the capital plan as a recreation project. Um, we, uh, you know, we're looking at that number coming down by, you know, to something in only the six figures uh, with Bill Long Hill kicking in their portion. Um, and again, it's, we're still not there yet. So we don't have uh, anything to announce to um, town uh, little league or, or, or the like. I actually have a follow-up question. Does this, um, I know that field's not that close to our high school, but does Arlington Catholic or Arlington High School use that field? I couldn't say. I don't know. Okay, thank you. The field is actually in fairly bad shape. Yes. Need a lot of work. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, Sophie, you're, you had your hand up before. You're yes. Thank you. Um, but quickly on the poet's field, I did receive a notice, I think, that it was out of use for Little League because my kids are in it. So I think they must. I, I remember seeing something about that at least last season at some point. Um, my questions are related to DPW. Um, the first question is, do you take into consideration um, disability, uh, the community needing um, access to sidewalks and such when you consider these projects and not funding uh, repairs fully? Do you speak? So, yeah, there are, um, if you look at our attachments, there are, there's a breakout. There's not just a single line item for roads and sidewalks. There are, I think, three for roads and four for sidewalks. And uh, there are some of them that are dedicated for um, things like accessibility and, and, and so forth. And those are, uh, we, we protect those fiercely. Okay, thank you. And, um, and for traffic improvements, I was just looking at line items. Do you, do you proactively anticipate just as citizens who drive around town where you see there could be improvements that maybe um, no department has specifically pointed out, but just by regular use, you anticipate knowing. Yeah, I think I missed the first part of what you were asking. Can you say it again, please? Do you, right. How much do you anticipate on your own as a committee versus depending on the projects coming to you just from your own experience in town? Well, I mean, as for example, you know, I drive my kids to school every day and, uh, so I experience the roads as, as you all are residents and and I can say to myself sometimes, yeah, this road, this road needs some work. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I, I really go around scouting out town buildings and saying that needs a new roof. I would prefer to defer to the uh, facilities department on that. Actually, I don't know what's happening in terms of needing a new boiler, but um, we all, you know, we're all residents here and um, probably in addition to this being residents, we have sort of probably have our capital eyeglasses on as well as we go about our, our, our lives. Okay, so even though um, no department may point out, for example, Mass Ave and, and um, Jason Street, just random one, um, you would, is that, does that come up in your discussions of funding something that hasn't been put forth? So Mass Ave and which street, sorry? Um, I'm just thinking in, in my own neighborhood. So Mass Ave and sort of Jason and Mill Street. Okay, yeah. So, I mean, um, we haven't heard any specific requests for, you know, upgrades to intersections, that kind of thing. Uh, if, if the, you know, that's part of the, of the capital plan of the, of the, um, uh, DPW, maintaining the roads, um, changing, you know, if, if, if they need to fix traffic lights or what have you, or perhaps upgrade traffic lights because there's been a request to install a turn signal, like a left turn signal at, at an intersection um, that goes through a evaluation process, but that would eventually come to us in terms of being paid for. Um, but I mean, that's, again, we, 
unless we were to submit a request about you know changing the intersection through the usual channel it wouldn't we wouldn't have a dedicated line to dpw that way it would be more like the people who would be coming to us and saying we need money for this general set of things including and then you know they probably wouldn't tell us that specific intersection but that would probably be on their underlying list thank you Brian Beck, you have your hand up, or is it down now? Uh, yeah, it was a question about the DPW and the reduced funding in general. I think Tim Timur just answered the question. Okay, thank you. Any other questions uh, for Timur at this point? Okay, Timur, uh, I'd suggest you just charge ahead here, but I would yeah, like yeah. To, that there, there may be a uh, there may be a a uh, wetland issue at Poets Corner which uh, probably somebody should look into. Thanks for the uh, tip. Um, yeah, I, I did, didn't want to um, uh, take up too much time with, with, with questions, but I want to sort of pause there at that point because it was sort of the uh, summary slide. Now, if I could turn it over to Sandy Pooler, our Deputy Town Manager, to look at the capital plant achievements and to put it into context. Um, so there are some projects uh, that on the left recently realized benefits from the capital plan. These are things that uh, have been accomplished in this last year. Uh, I was going to rattle off a number of names of roadways and sidewalks that were repaid. However, um, DPW is still putting that up on their website. I had talked to Mike Rademacher about that. So I'm going to skip over the first two things. Uh, I will go straight to the reservoir. As many of you know, uh, there's been a substantial project being done there. It is still somewhat ongoing, uh, but we have a major renovation of the reservoir. We put in a, a new facility for filtering the water and, and chlorinating it and cleaning it and so forth. Uh, and that part is done. And if you go over there, uh, you will see for the summer that a lot of the pathways and playgrounds and so forth uh, will be open to the public. So we are looking forward to that. Uh, the Parmenter School underwent significant renovations so that it could house uh, the Monotony Preschool that had to move out of the high school because of that, uh, that construction project. Uh, that is now done uh, and uh, the kids are in that school. Lake Street signals, these are the signals on the bike path on Lake Street, uh, um, just near the Hardy School. Um, I have ridden my bike and used the crosswalk there many times, so signals work well to coordinate the lights along the streets to uh, facilitate smooth traffic flow and also make it easy for people using the bike path to get across. Uh, we did replace all the sidewalks in uh, the center of town I got rid of the bricks, uh, got rid of a lot of tripping ha hazards. Uh, Whittemore Park, you probably noticed that that um, has been uh, remodeled. Uh, there are new pathways there, new benches. Uh, some of the old dead and dying trees were taken out and new trees were put in. Uh, the police have replaced their uh, radio system. Um, so they have five new antennas up. Um, they have gotten rid of the dead spots that they used to have in some parts of town. They are very happy with their new system. Town Hall, the steps and the plaza in front along Mass Ave have been replaced um, to smooth them out. There's also now a system underneath the plaza that can be heated to take snow off there uh, and reduce generally some of the tripping hazards that have been in front of Town Hall. And We've undertaken a school engineering study uh, to uh, look at the HVAC systems in many of the schools um, and looking at the possibility of uh, uh, electrifying some of those heating systems going forward. And we look forward to recommendations from the facilities department in coming years uh, for those projects. Uh, various Capital projects are in process. As I say, usually there is a link up on the DPW website that lists these things. Um, I think they will have them up soon, so I'm sorry I can't rattle them off to you. Um, the community center 
uh, which is the old central school behind town hall is due to be open this month. Uh, I know we're having a little informal event over there on Wednesday, uh, just to look around it. Um, and I've been through much of it. Uh, it looks like a beautiful new site for the senior center, uh, for uh, the health and human services department. We've moved the veterans agent over there. Upstairs, there are still tenants, um, but there are also uh, a lot of new uh, meeting spaces uh, with, that will be available for the public to use. Um, DPW building, you'll see some pictures of that in a little bit. That is really gotten underway. They've started doing uh, the drillings that they need to do um, to lay the foundations. In the meantime, there have been a, there's been a substantial amount of work done on the old existing buildings um, that are going to be used to house um, IT and facilities uh, and um, the inspections department. Um, and that work is, uh, has been moving along uh, at, at, at pace. Uh, the Mystic Street Bridge is one of those crazy projects that keeps going and going and going. Um, we have um, been dealing with Eversource and trying to get them to move some uh, major lines that go through there. Um, but we do think that sometime this, this spring that will be able to move forward. We are on the verge of adopting the new water and sewer financial software for billing for our water and sewer rates to our customers and link it with the new upgrades in uh, meters and meter reading equipment that we have um, and getting rid of uh, the old um, system that is about 30 years old that was written in-house and that uh, work is basically held together with, with bubble gum and, and rubber bands. Uh, so um, we are very much looking forward to that happening um, and that is expected really to launch uh, with some new bills coming out um, for April. Uh, and then I just mentioned the high school, even though it didn't really go through our committee, um, it is probably the largest project that we have in the town now. Um, the new building, the first the steam wing opened up uh, about a week ago. Yeah. Students are in their classrooms there. Um, I was in there the other day, just looking around and uh, looking at a lot of students who were giggling and pointing and laughing and saying to teachers, this looks great. So um, that project is moving forward. I do just want to mention, we have an excellent, excellent team there. Our uh, owner's project manager, Skanska, and in particular, I'd like to call out the work that Consigli, uh, the firm that is, is building the building has done to manage it keep it on time and keep it under budget. Um, I think we really uh, got a great contractor when we got Consigli. So I just wanted to give them a little uh, shout out. That's basically some of the major projects uh, that uh, and their status these days. Um, so I've gone from talking about things to talking about money. Um, I want to go through a two-phase process to talk about how much money we have to spend on the capital plan. At the top row, you see the town budget. Um, each year, we put the town capital plan together based on the town budget as it is in place uh, in December. Um, this year, I slightly changed those numbers to increase them by the amount of debt that we uh, issued um, in February. Um, so uh, they're not exactly the December numbers, they're the December numbers tweaked a little bit. We would, we've then over the years adjusted this for the amount of, um, and brought it down by the amount of the general fund that was spent on the water and sewer rates and, and as a subsidy. I just showed it again this year uh, to show that it is now completely gone. Um, we then further adjust it by taking out all the exempt debt service. In, the other, in other words, the debt service uh, for bonds that we have sold, 
where voters have voted uh, a debt exclusion, in other words, an increase to their property taxes that goes exclusively to pay off those bonds. And finally, we reduce this for uh, adjustments for enterprise funds, mostly the subsidies that um, or the charges that we make to the water and sewer department and certain other funds like CDBG uh, to pay for um, some of the work that is done by town departments. We do all these subtractions because we're trying to get a number uh, of which we can take 5%. And we don't want to try to spend 5% of things like exempt debt service because all that $12 million, for example, in 2023 has to go to pay exempt debt service. We can't take 5% of it toward capital. We can't take 5% of the $3.2 million that we charge the water and sewer funder CDBG for general fund purposes. So then we get down to this number of the adjusted town budget 182 uh, million in FY23, uh, going all the way up to 215 uh, million in FY27. Um, next slide, please. Um, I'm gonna just note that at the bottom, the, its bottom section, the pro forma budget, that 182 million that I referred to before is the same number that, um, you saw from the previous slide. So just keep that in mind. I'm gonna come back to it in a second. At the top of this slide, what we do is we look at all the things that we're spending on the capital plan. So the very top level is our prior non-exempt debt service. In other words, the part of capital that we're spending out of the general fund um, in order to uh, get to our 5% rule. Uh, we don't include up here uh, the amount that is in the exempt debt because that is kind of outside of the capital plan. It's outside of that 5% limit. It's over and above. So our not exempt, exempt debt service is up there. Then there's cash, um, just what we pay in any one year of cash for capital projects. We know that in the future, in the capital plan, we are going to sell more debt. And so in this next line, we mark out the amount of debt service that we will have to pay. In other words, the interest and principal on the debt that we will sell in FY23 and have to start paying in FY24, or that we sell in FY24 and have to pay in FY25, along with the debt service that we, uh, for what we sold in 23 and paid in 24, and then have to pay more in 25 and so forth and so on. That's why it keeps going up. Uh, and then finally, we have one line where there are instances where instead of selling long-term debt, we sell a short-term uh, ban, a bond anticipation note, where we borrow money and just pay back interest. There's no principal in, the, in this line. Uh, and there are a couple of projects that we'll talk about later, but we think we might ban. That all comes to about $10 million, $10.5 million rising to $11.6 million in FY27. That's everything that we're spending in the capital plan. There are sources that we use other than the general fund to reduce uh, our, our total general fund usage. So we take money, for example, from the ambulance revolving fund where we pay for things that are directly related to buying ambulances or equipment for ambulances. The antenna fund we use uh, mostly for debt service for things related to parks and recreation projects for which we've borrowed. Um, if we have sold uh, an asset a, a land specifically, um, we can use that. Um, there's a total of $946 this year that we're using in the capital plan for that. Capital carry forwards are things we always see in the first year of the plan, where that's money that it came from previous authorizations by town meeting for projects that have been finished. There's money left over, it's been unspent. So we essentially recycle that money into the capital plan. 
Uh, we have charged the parking benefits district for one item this year. You see that there. Down below, there are some capital projects that are directly related to the Recreation Enterprise Fund and to the Rink Enterprise Fund. And we charge each of those funds uh, uh, what we think is a share that they can afford to pay for their capital. And then uh, the same thing with the Urban Renewal Fund that is uh, under the uh, Arlington Redevelopment Board um, for some of the capital projects that relate to the buildings that they can control. Um, so those reduce general fund usage. Also within that $10 million up at the top, there's $512,000 that came from the FY 2000 or the 2011 override uh, that was specifically earmarked for road reconstruction across town. That amount started out at, and, uh, at a particular number and has increased by two and a half percent per year. The next one down is uh, accessibility improvements, which again were part of the override in 2019. That standard started at $200,000, also increased to two and a half percent. So, um, Again, it's part of the number that we have at the top of the page, uh, but since it's over and above the 5% spending because it was part of those overrides, we don't count it. And so we subtract it out of the total. And then um, in the last couple of years, we have started uh, looking at all of the rent we take in from town owned properties that just goes into the general fund. And for the, some of the capital projects at those town owned properties, we're basically charging the general fund a small amount that uh, reflects some debt service uh, to offset the cost of that debt service. So it doesn't hit the 5% of the general fund, it just hits the general fund uh, a little bit generally, $13,000. So we then get to a bottom line for FY23 of $9,098,033. Um, Below that, uh, three lines down, you see the budget plan at 5%. So 5% of that $182 million uh, is $9.1 million. Uh, so for FY23, we are actually have a little bit of a surplus. In other words, uh, we have $7,835. Um, that uh, is the difference between what we're spending, actually spending, which is the $9,098 and what we could spend if we spent the full 5%. Um, so we're, the, we're, we're within our 5% for FY23, for 24, 25. We are slightly out of whack in 26, um, but that's four years away. So we're not gonna worry about that right now. Uh, for 27, we're right at 5%. And importantly for us as a committee, we work very hard to make sure that over the full five-year course of the plan, we are um, at or below 5% spending. And in this case, we're uh, just slightly below that 5% limit by $769. So this plan is in conformity with the 5% rule. I'd be happy to answer any questions that people have about the numbers at this point. Alan Jones. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. The um, two commitments that were made with the overrides for roadway reconstruction and accessibility improvements, is, is there any sunset on those or did they go on forever? Those were permanent overrides, not debt exclusion overrides. So those go on forever. Since they're excluded from the capital plan, would it make sense to just fold those in, into the DPW budget or something? It just seems kind of messy to leave them here forever. Well, the problem with putting that money into the DPW is that the general, that the town budget has its own spending limits. Um, and so then adding money that, you, you then have to adjust the town spending limits, which has traditionally been three and a quarter percent per year. So, uh, and I think because these are really capital projects, it does make sense to show them here. We don't think it, um, upsets the plan and so far we've been able to keep track of it. Okay, somehow it just seems unclean, but anyway, thank you. Any other questions for the deputy town manager and finance director on these numbers? 
Okay. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Okay, so back to me. Um, thank you, Sandy. Um, so we wanted to just talk a little bit about, uh, in addition to our usual funds, there are a few sources that we refer to as other, and we wanted to give you extra information about ARPA, which I will cover, and uh, CPA, which Kate Berry will cover. So the Federal um, American Rescue Plan Act was passed one year ago this week. It provided vast amounts of money nationwide, including at the state and municipal, municipal levels. Arlington received over $30 million, and there are many um, eligible uses that are considered COVID-related. Um, for the capital plan, we are seeing funds for investments in parks and open spaces, places where people can enjoy life and exercise and hopefully in a non-COVID um, communicating environment, and for HVAC upgrades to make our uh, town buildings, including school buildings, um, safer for people who need to use them. Uh, there's about $4 million uh, for recreation purposes and $2.2 million for HVAC. Uh, the capital plan, in terms of what we were looking at covering in our five-year plan, benefits from $3 million of that. Um, now, I wanted to also just highlight, though, that so the, these uh, $3 million we're talking about here, these do not affect the FY23 capital budget. They're going to be taking place in the out years. Um, or, uh, and actually in the case of some of the playground repairs that you'll see in the footnote at the bottom, there are a few urgent repairs being done at Bishop Pearson Stratton. Those are in fiscal 22, so right now, um, which again is not part of our fiscal 23 through 27 uh, capital plan. Um, one thing that you'll perhaps notice in our deck is that sometimes the, uh, the words and numbers are gray. And what that is a sort of the convention we have here, uh, when the spending is in the out year as opposed to the current or sorry, the, the upcoming fiscal year, 23, it's gray. If it's for 23, it's black to sort of have it pop out more. Mr. Tosti. There is no such thing as the Dallin Library. Can you back up one more, two more? You need to get back. Uh, so it's the, um, this is the former library that is what it is now the ACMI. Is that, is that the building I'm thinking about, Sandy? Yes, that's correct. If that's the case, I just think you should rename it. It should be the ACMI building or uh, something. But like I said, there is no Dallin Library. Okay, um, thank you. I'll, we don't want to be confusing, so we'll, we'll make an uh, adjustment. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me now pass it over to Kate Leary to talk about uh, community Integration Act funding. Sure. Um, so, uh, can we? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, so, um, we have sort of a, an understanding with the capital um, with the Community Preservation Act Committee um, that capital funds school playgrounds, and that if they can, um, the CP the CPA budget will um, fund town playgrounds and field um, fields. If they're not able to do that, then they will send it back to us and we'll see if we can fund it. Um, ARPA has also come into play as Timor mentioned this year. Um, so this year, um, CPAC has approved funding for Robbins Farm Park, Heard Field, the second phase and um, Jarvis House, which I think you'll hear about um, in the town building section. Um, so one thing, we had a very productive conversation um, with some members of the CPAC committee, um, the CPA committee, um, the Park and Rec Commission, the, the recreation director um, and town employees about um, 
their committee moving towards a five year planning process, which would better match the process that that we all go through. Um, because typically like it, those requests appear in capital, but we know like, and we hope that they're not all gonna have to be funded by capital, um, but we don't actually know until February. Um, and we still know, won't know for sure, but um, they've added, they've begun gathering more information in their application about future projects from um, town entities, especially. Um, and you will hear more about that, um, of course, when they present to you. Um, but something to know about this year, you know, they're always trying to keep a mix in their spending of what of what projects they're they're spending on in the approved categories. And in FY23, rec projects are actually about half of their spending. Um, that's typical. That's not typical. Um, and we can't really expect that every year. Um, it's partly because there were not um, housing corporation of Arlington applications this year. So they were able to fund more rec projects, um, but certainly that's something we'll be keeping an eye on. Okay, um, could you go to the next slide? Thank you. Um, so my role as the, as the liaison here is really to kind of talk to them about, um, you know, which of the projects that might have been in capital they will be picking up. So this year, those are um, the Herdfield Project, Robin's Farm, and Jarvis House. And you'll, you will get a lot more detail from them, them about all of these projects. Okay, I'll take it back now. Thank you, Kate. Uh, so having discussed sources, now we turn to uses. And uh, this summarizes all uh, the items that we're buying in fiscal 23, like they will cost the town out of pocket. Um, we wanted to use this to frame the subsequent uh, discussion uh, in detail uh, by department. Um, this is not by any means the same as the gross or net tax burden um, because uh, this is just out of pocket. We, we of course finance some purchases. So everything that's on this page is under bond. Um, we will be paying debt service on for years to come in the future. Um, and conversely, this year, um, we are paying debt service on items that we bonded in prior years. Nevertheless, you can see here, and it'll, this will help frame, you know, how much we're giving to relative amounts for different purposes. And of course, a leading off uh, will be uh, public works. So uh, over to uh, Mr. Tuller again to talk about our largest piece of the capital budget, public works. Um, well, as you can see, there's not much going up yet, but there are things going into the ground right now. And uh, these are these big drills that are helping to lay uh, the, whatever the foundation parts are that uh, I am not an engineer, so I can't tell you. But uh, we took this just the other day uh, because they are starting to do that drilling work. Uh, this is a large project. It's a $46.5 million project. Um, the uh, big part of this project was moving IT out of the high school and relocating it over to uh, the old DPW buildings. That has been done, and we have su successfully uh, transferred all our technology out of the high school uh, so it were to its new permanent location. The staff has not moved in yet because the uh, offices aren't ready yet, but uh, the rooms under air conditioning and climate control for the servers and routers and this, that, and the other thing are, are all set up. Um, we do expect to see uh, steel starting going up uh, or foundations going in and then steel started going up later this spring. Um, so we're very much looking forward to that project moving forward over the uh, next year and a half. Next slide, please. Uh, Sandy, before you go on to the next slide, Talk I have a question I'm channeling for, for Dean Carmen here, um, somewhat related to the DPW project, but also somewhat tangential, uh, which is he asks about um, 
what's going on with regard to the search for alternatives uh, to, to replace the loss of the Pierce practice field as a result of the DPW project. And in particular, he, uh, he provided us with a copy of a, from his apparently extensive archives of town documents, a, a memo from the town manager back in 2018 to the uh, high school building committee uh, talking about the, the search for alternatives to the peers practice field. And one of the uh, options that Adam mentioned was uh, looking into the use of the town owned parcel on Ryder Street. And so yeah, Dean is asking like what has, uh, has there been any progress in terms of looking at that as a potential new site for the Pierce practice field? Uh, so between the time that uh, town manager Chapterlane wrote that memo and today, several things have happened. Uh, one, at the high school, the design of the play fields out there have um, created, that there will be two new um, playing fields on uh, artificial turf that um, will allow, uh, I guess I call rectangular sports to happen, sports like soccer and lacrosse. Um, those spaces did not exist in the in the existing high school, an existing space. The existing space, we just had the stadium, which is the, um, the Pierce Stadium, and then that practice field, which is right behind the stop and shop. Uh, um, so I think the first thing that's changed since Adam wrote that memo was um, that once the high school project is finished, we will now have two nice turf fields uh, that will be available both to the high school and to the public. Second, the other thing that has happened since Adam wrote that memo is that um, the DPW project had to take over the Ryder Street property as a, um, an alternative site for some of its equipment and some of its staff. So the Ryder Street site is currently being used by DPW now and will be continue to be used through um, the DPW construction project. Um, the other thing that is continuing to happen, as you've heard mention of before, is that the Poets Corner project um, is continuing to be under discussion. I think at the time that Adam wrote that memo, there was a different entity that was interested um, in, in partnering with the town, but now Belmont Hill School is. And um, so I think at the end of the day, uh, if that project is able to be done, that will also be additional um, playing space for different teams. As for Ryder Street, um, because it's being used by DPW now, we do not have plans yet for what's going to happen to it next. That is an important discussion that will have to happen uh, with the town manager and select board and, and, and probably uh, others about what we do with Ryder Street, what the best use for that is, and whether um, given the changes in the fields that I've just talked about, it would be needed for the kind of fields that Dean is asking for, or whether in fact, um, there's some other better use for it, none of which has been decided today. So that is the status. Um, and those are some of the changes that have happened over the last um, three years since the memo was written. Jaylene? Thank, yes. thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Charlie. Um, I just also channeling Dean and knowing that uh, he coached soccer as I did. Um, younger children can't play on turf the, uh, the way that older kids can. So I'm sure that the extra turf fields that are, it's great to hear those are going in around the high school. Those are not going to help the town soccer club and I don't know who else used the Pierce practice fields, but those were grass. I used to coach on those. And um, you you can't put little kids on turf the way you can put them on grass. Um, I'm just flagging that as a possible, like this. these are the kinds of issues that the average citizen doesn't pay attention to until it's kind of done. 
And I know that I would have been horrified to find out I had to put like first and second graders onto turf. The cleats that the parents buy for them aren't for turf. So um, I just want to register that as a concern. If, if we're losing um, the Pierce practice field, which was a nice grass field behind the stop and shop, the town really should give some serious consideration to, to finding a, a new replacement for that. And that and that turf fields are not a replacement for grass fields. That's all. Thank, thank you, Shailene. Thank you. Sandy, uh, can you uh, state did the, is the area of the field playing space increased with the addition of those two fields or is it not? The usability of those spaces has increased because in the prior fields, they did not have space for uh, soccer fields or lacrosse fields on the previous softball field or baseball field that uh, was, was there. So now, because there'll be turf fields, you can play softball and baseball as well as, as I say, rectangular sports. Okay, so there's more. It's not, an in, it's not an increase, it's not an increase in area. It's not an increase in the land, but it is increase in the usable space because in, in the past, a soccer team couldn't go out on the softball field or, or baseball field and play, but in the well, future, they will be able to. But if, if the field was fully used, you couldn't, you can't increase its use either. I'm just, but let's not, I'm just asking that question. That's all. Sure. Any other questions on that subject? Good. Charge ahead. Charging ahead. Um, so we have uh, a lot of uh, town roads. 96.5 miles of roads. And uh, periodically the Department of Public Works contracts with a, an outside contractor to do an assessment of those roads and um, which is called a pavement index. And um, our last index came in at a 79, which is 79 out of hundred, which means that our roads in general are in fair condition. So there are some roads that are in great condition, some roads that are lousy condition. Overall, on average, our roads uh, hit a 79. It has been suggested to us from the company that does these reports that in order to maintain uh, ourselves at that 79, we would need to spend on average about $2 million a year. The proposed capital plan uh, average is about $1.74 million a year, um, slightly more than what we were spending last year, but it's still not hitting that $2 million that we'd, we'd like to get to. And we've had many discussions within the Capital Planning Committee about how to get to that larger number. I think we're committed to trying to get to that number. Um, and, uh, but we know that uh, we need over time to ratchet up the amount that we're spending on, on those items. Um, I will say there is some short-term hope in that, in that um, the governor has proposed increasing our chapter 90 money, which goes toward road reconstruction uh, by about 50% this year. It, it usually across the state, there's a $200 million chapter 90 bond bill and he's proposed a $300 million bond bill. Um, so we're hoping to um, get some money at least this year, but again, over the long run, I think we are committed to spending more on our roads than we're currently spending. Um, and um, sidewalks and curbs continue to be an ongoing issue. It's one of the most frequently um, complained about issues to the DPW from the public. Um, it was increasing the spending on those sidewalk and curbs uh, through the last override and, and enhancing accessibility that was part of that override campaign. Um, we fund it on average is about $811,000 a year. And again, I think it is our feeling that over time that needs to go up. So at this point, we're just flagging that as an issue um, and letting you know that in the future, uh, we are committed to try to spend more in that area, in both those areas. Next slide, please. This is just a recap of um, how we are spending um, 
money uh, in DPW in FY23. You can see uh, there's various general um, purchases. Um, and then there's a whole category on uh, uh, vehicles or vehicle parts. Um, and we have that same split out into the future. Um, so um, you get a, just a general sense of, of how money is being spent. Um, both in DPW, they, all the items above uh, the second line from the bottom are general fund expenditures. And then uh, the water and sewer fund expenditures are down at the bottom. Next slide, please. And pass it over to Kate Lucian. Hi, I'm Kate Lucian. Um, and I also sit on the Arlington High School Building Committee, uh, along with Sandy and others. Um, so a couple of slides, knowing this is an exempt project, we just uh, thought we'd give a quick update. Uh, as um, was mentioned earlier, the STEAM wing opened uh, last week and the Performing Arts wing will open in April. Um, and it's very exciting to see that first phase come to fruition. We've already begun in preparation for demolition in phase two, which will include the humanities, the central spine, finishing the cafeteria, library, preschool, and district office wings. Um, and that will open up in September of 2023. Uh, the final building part of the project is an athletics wing that opens in August of 2024. And then there's uh, lots of fields and site work to follow after the construction finishes. Um, I wanna echo what Sandy said, Consigli has been really a tremendous asset on this project that has taken place in an extraordinarily difficult time. So of course, while I'm talking, my cat gets on here, I apologize. Can I have the next slide? A few other pictures actually <laughs> before completion, it's even nicer to know that these things are now open for business, um, but a sort of progress on site and really moving along. Next slide, please. Um, I'm also speaking to the um, other major renovations that we're proposing for Arlington Public Schools. Um, and again, I'll point out as Timor did earlier that um, if it's a black print, it is in this current fiscal year, FY23, and anything in gray is out beyond FY23 to the out years of 24 through 27. Um, so at the Hardy School, We'll be funding a roof replacement uh, and then um, some HVAC upgrades in the out years of FY26, uh, ARPA funded as noted earlier, and then envelope repairs coming in the future at that building as well. At the Bishop School in out years, we'll be doing roof replacements, also some HVAC and envelope repairs. Uh, and then the bracket playground renovation, some immediate repairs in the coming fiscal year, and then a larger project in FY25. Um, I guess I'll ask for the next slide. One project that has been completed is the Hardy Playground. Uh, and it's really uh, here again, wonderful to see some of that work come to fruition and in use. These are images of that playground. That's my quick summary for schools and I'm turning it over. Thank you. Um, good evening, I'm Michael Mason. Um, and I'll be touching, talking about the, what's in the plan for the fire department. Um, the, the plan for the fire department includes uh, um, facilities and non-facilities related requests. Um, and this slide here touches upon some of the non-facilities related requests for the fire department that's included in the plan. And so, for, you know, for each year, the first one is the, for each year the fire department requests a funding for protective gear for our firefighters. Um, and this protective gear includes pants, coats, gloves, um, boots, the helmets, and the funding usually covers about 10 sets of gear that has expectancy of uh, life expectancy of about 10 years, um, which is according to the National Fire Protection Association standards. Uh, um, in the out years, what you'll see once again in gray is that we anticipate that these costs will increase in the out years. And so the out year budget items will be increased by $5,000 um, for $30,000 going forward. Um, also included is uh, 
a request for a new uh, fire engine, which the department anticipates to cost 675,000, which is substantially higher than what was previously requested due to inflation of costs. Um, the current the, the current plan, you know, has fire engines being replaced about every 20 years. Um, the fire department uh, will replace does replace one every five years, so there are five there are four engines, um, and the the engine that's going to be retired will be one that was purchased in 2001. It is the Pierce engine. Um, Another request is which is the air supply vehicle replacement, which is really the consolidation of two vehicles. Um, is two vehicles uh, that did two functions. One was uh, air supply and the other was lighting. This vehicle would cost about 133,000. Uh, I'm sorry, somebody. I'm not sure if I heard anything, sorry. Um, this vehicle would cost about 133,000, um, which, um, would, in, would function as the air supply and lighting vehicle. Um, and both vehicles are currently well past the, the use of their use of useful life um, and in desperate need of repair. The other is a critical uh, update to uh, a communication system. Um, and it also has some infra infrastructure upgrading, um, which is tied to a system called Zetron. Um, that system is um, integral for uh, res uh, emergency response, where it connects dispatch to the fire department. And so, for example, when there are late night calls and the fire fighters may be uh, resting, uh, these systems would alert firefighters, turn on the lights, will get them going uh, to be responsive. Uh, the current system uses uh, uh, outdated uh, wires that had redundancy that's now uh, past that point of where there, there's limited redundancy, where if it does go down, there may be uh, issues with responsiveness. There's also a request for a jaws of life. Um, I see that there's a question. I'm not sure if I should wait until I no, finish. No, just wait till you're finished. All right. There's also the jaws of life uh, uh, equipment to that's cost $50,000, which has about a 10 year replacement cycle is beyond its 10 years useful life. They're also looking into making this an electric uh, jaws of life. The current equipment, you know, runs off hydraulic fluids and diesel fuel and uh, currently leaks. It's not a, a clean system. And so this would also uh, go towards the town's electrification goals. And there are various vehicle replacements that uh, include ambulances and other department vehicles that cost over $1 million. I could answer the question now or go to the next slide. Well, can you wait, uh, Sophie, until Michael's finished with his presentation? Are you finished, Michael? Or no, no, finished? I mean, the next couple slides, I won't go too much into detail, but the, the facilities department did walkthroughs. That was the, the facilities director at the time, uh, the superintendent of uh, buildings and, um, and the, the fire chief did walkthroughs at the locations. And the following slides just touches a base on um, which, what the facilities department recommended. Uh, just so that the uh, FinCon would, uh, finance committee understands that Park Circle was renovated in 2007, and all the equipment that is on the, in this plan is was installed in 2007 and has passed its useful life. As well, Central Station, the exterior, the masonry was done in 2014. Um, there are current leaks in the building. Um, the masonry work was supposed to last eight to 10 years. So um, this would be in line when they're putting in, the, they're scheduling these funds. And this is why uh, facilities felt comfortable recommending. And then if you go to the next slide, it will touch based upon the Highland Station uh, facility uh, repairs or, or uh, projects, which the Highland Station was a renovation that was completed in 2011 and this equipment was installed. And so in fiscal 27, it would be passed as useful ice as well. Um, which would be the two boilers and a hot water tank. And then last but not least, the headquarters. That was renovated in 2015. These, um, these were also recommended by the facilities department as it would be meeting its useful life period um, at that point in fiscal 27. 
now that concludes my uh, my portion of the fire department. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Sophie? Yes, uh, thank you. Sorry, Michael, about that. I'm new to all this. I just wanna make sure I got noticed. Um, I think it was on your first slide on protective gear. I'm just curious, going back to the fire department's budget, they have a line item in there for expenses, right? On uniforms and gloves and badges and all that. So, so they don't cover any of their protective gear in their budget? And you guys could, or how does that work? My understanding of the, the that the protective gear is has been funded historically from the capital funding budget and you know, the equipment costs about 2,400 per uniform or per, uh, per firefighter. Um, I, I, I couldn't speak to anything about on the operational side at the moment. And as far as, I know they also have line items um, for repairs and maintenance on their vehicles and everything like that. Is there a distinction between what you guys cover and what their budget covers? So their vehicle replacement program uh, covers just the replacement of vehicles, not the repairs. Um, so that, that would be the distinct, distinguishing factor between what you're seeing in the operational side versus what's in this plan. Okay. Right, thank you. No problem. Jonathan? Yeah. Hi, Michael. It's John Wallach. Um, I just had a question um, from Dean Carmen, who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, which is he asked um, whether there were any capital requests by the fire chief um, that were considered and uh, rejected. Uh, in other words, not included in the capital budget or, or five-year plan. No, no, there was no request that was rejected from the fire department. If anything, there were requests that we actually pushed forward because we deemed it as critical according to the explanation that was provided in our meetings. Uh, the, for example, the Zetron upgrade was actually scheduled for fiscal 24, but based on the understanding of that particular request, um, it, it seemed that that was essential to their operation and we suggested to move that forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Shailene? Yes, thank you. As far as the response communication system and infrastructure, I'm wondering if there's any overlap with the police department on that. And, and then similar to Sophie's question, um, if you can comment on how that breaks down between the department budgets and this budget. Um, yeah, does it overlap with police? And then at what point does the capital budget take over because the police and fire departments are not covering it? So my understanding that this is a one-time cost. Um, this, is, this is to make sure that, this, that they have a system in place for communication between the systems. This is not tied to an operational cost. Um, most, of the, some, most of the infrastructure that was required is, has already been installed. Uh, which means that's the fiber optics. Otherwise, you know, if they were to let this system um, or not do the upgrade down the road, they would have to do some so, uh, serious uh, work, which would include possible uh, going in and putting conduit down for additional wiring for the current system. And so uh, that's the difference. This is not uh, like an operational portion. This is in, indeed capital in that regard. So this is capital it's an upgrade, and then um, and, and does that help out the police department at all, or or is it separate from the police? So in the context of this system, I, I, I did not uh, got get that information in the sense of will the police department be leveraging this uh, um, this system, but that can be something that we could look into and report back to the committee if needed, if would you if you would like that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Timur? Yes, next slide, please. Thank you, Michael. Sorry, yeah, here we go. Uh, now to address the police. Um, so uh, bullet one, we have an annual appropriation of uh, $140,000 for vehicle replacement. Uh, typically it's three vehicles per year. It's two marked cars and, and one either unmarked car or a motorcycle. And that is ongoing. We will be uh, spending that again in fiscal 23. 
Uh, bullet two, there's a, a need for a replacement boiler in the police station. It was not replaced during the police station renovation and it is not, the current boiler is not quite adequate to fully heat the station. Uh, and so uh, this is we had another example of one that we actually pulled forward in the plan because we thought we would rather not see them have freezing pipes. Um, so in terms of uh, that the cost of such an event could, could uh, compound matters. Uh, bullet three, we have, uh, they have um, digital fingerprint machines. This is uh, $35,000 in total that covers two units. Uh, one of which is in the booking area, one of which is in, in the administrative office. Uh, and this is a, a significant, and, oh, so they currently have one, uh, which is at reaching its end of the useful life. Um, it's also significant use, uh, uh, improvement of usefulness when they have that in two locations. If, the, uh, if there's a booking taking place, then, uh, then they can't use the one that is the single one that they have right now, currently in the booking area for anything other than booking because it's a, not, it, it would be a, it's a secure area. And so you can't have somebody come in who needs the fingerprinting done um, to be using the digital machine. They have to do it the old fashioned way with ink pads and mailing it in, which sometimes the impression isn't very good and it wastes lots of time because you, you find out a few days later that nope, I have to do it again. So this way we'll be able to handle it in both locations and for, in the police station. Uh, the fourth bullet, um, no pun intended, is the Bulletproof Best Program. Um, this is $22,000 per year uh, for vests that covers 14 officers per year. So they're about $1,600 each. Um, and these have a useful life of five years. So uh, at 14 officers per year, we are covering all 70 officers over the five-year cycle. Um, that is it for 23. In the out years, we have a cooling tower that needs replacement next year and a specialty vehicle in fiscal 27. Um, and I want to address Mr. Common's question. I'm uh, guessing that that's what, what John's going to ask about. Am I correct, John? Sorry, Timur, what yeah. question were you yeah, Yes, ask? sorry, I, I, please do so. Okay, so yes, Mr. Common's question, uh, there were no capital, to answer, there were no capital requests by the police chiefs that were considered and rejected. So Timur, do you have another slide on the police department or is this it? This is it for the police. Happy to take questions from Mr. Tosti or Ms. Uh, so, uh, Sophie, do you want to go with your question, please? Sure, so I'm just double checking to, because um, I know the equipment budget, I would have expected the digital fingerprint machines to be part of the equipment budget for the police. So we're confirming that they're not in there, right? It's a separate. Uh, I don't know your, your budget, but I, this is a large expense and it's a long lasting item. So it's appropriate for, for it to be capital. Okay, thank you. Al Uh Timor, I don't know if you'd know this, but are police officers uh, on patrol required to wear the bulletproof vests? Yes, this uh, it took a while, but this is a, um, it's a, actually all, officers and uh, sort of patrolmen and ranking officers are all required to in their most recent union uh, negotiation outcomes. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Timur. Uh, that covers it for police. I'd like to pass it over again to Kate Leary to talk about recreation. Thank you. <laughs> um... So the total requests that are actually being funded by capital were $135,000 this year. Um, those are for ongoing programs. Um, one program was a new program in FY22, playground um, inspections and safety improvements. Um, and I will talk a little bit more about the history of that and why we're doing that um, in, in a couple of minutes. Um, but this was an increase last year FY22 was $25,000 a year. This year we've bumped it up to $75,000 a year um, and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, the ADA study implementation program, $50,000 a year is an ongoing program. 
um, and the feasibility study program. Um, typically, they get $10,000 a year, but sort of save it and do a bigger feasibility study that looks about um, that looks several years out. Um, can I have the next slide? Thank you. Um, so the inspections mentioned in that first program um, revealed a lot of issues. Um, and three of those playgrounds are town-owned playgrounds, which are located right next to schools and are uh, uh, very much felt by the school communities to be communities to be essential to uh, what they do with the kids at recess. Um, so a lot of equipment had to be removed from these three places, uh, Bishop, Pierce, and Stratton. Um, this is a picture of Stratton. You can see this, the swings are missing and then there's a significant fenced off area. Um, that's the situation recently. Um, Arlington Public Schools did contribute to the cost of you know, some immediate repairs. Um, there are a lot of issues here. Some of them were, I think in some cases, the vendors were no longer in business. Um, and it was determined that some of the, that um, it wasn't cost effective to repair, but to redesign and build a new playground. So the, um, those are the FY22 ARPA funded projects, three of them. That public input process is accelerated and underway right now. In fact, I think they've already had one meeting for all three of those, and there's another one in a few days. Um, and I will drop in a link if anyone's curious to kind of look at what's been presented and where they are in the pro process. I'll drop in a link to the rec department page announcement in the chat um, when I finish. Um, can I have the next slide, please? Um, so a little bit more about that playground audit and safety improvements um, program. So there was a report done in November 2019 that identified, it was a sort of an overarching view of a lot of the town owned playgrounds. Uh, it identified a lot of safety and, and maintenance concerns. Um, so the rec department said, let's, let's start a program of doing regular inspections and repairing things um, based on those inspections. Um, originally, they requested $25,000 a year for that. Um, they decided to start with 10 playgrounds. I think they started in August. Um, and the, the inspections cost about $15,000, which would leave about $10,000 for the repairs but they identified at about $80,000 worth of urgently needed repairs. Um, so that's why we had, a, you know, we had a conversation about whether that $25,000 needed to change. Um, so Joe Connolly feels that $75,000 a year going forward um, would be more appropriate. So <laughs> right now they're kind of getting through a backlog of inspections. 10 was about what they felt they could handle dealing with last year. They're gonna look at eight more playgrounds um, in the coming fiscal year, which will address the backlog. They're not looking at the very newest playgrounds. Um, after that, they're gonna inspect each playground annually um, in kind of chunks. So <clears throat> this is a CPA funded project that's in our current recommendations. Um, phase one designs underway, a bigger um, chunk of money was approved, was part of CPA funding last year. Um, that left $664,000 for phase two in FY23. Um, they are putting this project out to bid and um, expect to start in June, hopefully completing it mostly by November of 2022. 20, yes, that's right. Um, and the Robbins Farm Playground request um, went to CPA this year. It was approved for um, $997,993. Um, so that is proceeding. Um, they're looking to approve the final design by December 2022, bid it out in January, start in April, completion date around August. Um, so these were the FY22 projects, none of which were actually funded by capital. Um, 
So Parmenter was CDBG and state funded, Spy Pond was CPA funded. They did that design process together. Um, and this will be bid in March and scheduled to start later in the spring. So Spy Pond, I believe, was the oldest um, playground in town, if I remember correctly. All these plans are on um, are available on the Parks and Rec uh, portion of the town website as well, if, if anyone would like to take a look. That's all from me. Are there questions? Sophie, uh, you have a question? Just yet yeah, on the slide, I had the picture of the Robins um, Park. I don't think I noticed that I know there was a current issue that just came up with the slides. Is that included or not? Um, slides are part of the design. If I, there had initially been talk of doing those as two separate projects, but it was decided that um, with site mobilization, everything, it made sense to do them as two. They were going to try to do a um, sort of partial repair. There's a problem, I think, where the parts are not manufactured anymore or something like that. Um, I'll have to double check that. Um, they were going to, to try to get one of the slides functioning using parts from the other slide. But now the same part is broken on both sides. So they are not going to be able to fix it until this bigger project. Um, but slides are part of this design. Thank um, you. Kayleen? Thanks. Um, could you go back one or two slides? I'm not sure which I need one or two. Go back one more. Um, this might be where I was. I'm just curious. It might be the slide before this. You mentioned that. Um, there are going to be annual inspections of the playgrounds, which I have to be honest, seems excessive to me. Like, do we really need to invest in inspect playgrounds every single, every 12 months? That's quite frequent. It seems frequent. Um, and then also questioning whether um, these out, outside consultants, um, are we getting multiple opinions or is it, I mean, our, play, our playgrounds are awesome. And I know that they break down over time, but this seems like a lot of issues suddenly identified on, on playgrounds that my kids have played on that are, that are great. Um, and I'm wondering if we're just getting like kind of in a nanny state. So, my, so to that point, do we really need annual inspections? Is that standard in this industry? Um, and, oh, another point I had was given that we, it sounds like you were saying some of the contractors who improved some playgrounds are now no longer available or out of business. Could, what recourse do we have? Is there a way to put in a, some kind of policy in the future that would keep, um, that would make sure we use longstanding businesses? I think I'm putting that to the finance committee and to the greater town. Like, is there a way to make sure we use contractors that aren't going to go out of business? Because that's very disappointing. If something goes wrong with something we just paid for and we can't go back to the person who, or the company that did it for us. I know that was a lot of questions all at once. I, I will give it my best shot. Um, so the question about the vendors, that's a really important point. Um, these playground, the one, I believe it's Stratton and actually Mike, Michael Mason, I mean, I think knows more about this than I do. Um, so Mike, if I'm saying anything wrong, can you jump in? Um, that was not a, a recently installed playground at all. Um, it was quite old. Um, and the, the answer is the rec department and Joe Connolly are making an effort to try to put, to use vendors more consistently that have been in business for a long time and that they know are easy to work with. And then, and that it doesn't make sense to have equipment from a lot of different ven vendors spread across town so that you're dealing with all kinds of different um, companies. Um, so there definitely is an effort towards, towards um, consistency and standardization there. Um, I will check in about the industry standard question. Um, there have been a lot of safety issues on the playground. There have been injuries. Um, I personally see a lot of issues around town. So um, I think the rec really the um, body that 
is best positioned to answer those questions is the Park and Rec Commission, who the, rec who the rec director works with closely. My understanding is that this is a best practice to do more frequent inspections and to stay on top of maintenance um, more regularly instead of sort of waiting until there's a problem that someone notices and then fixing it. Um, some of the issues get wor worse over time. Um, Whereas if you would, if you catch them quickly, I think you can repair them um, cheaper. That's my understanding. Um, I'm just having these conversations. I do not have expertise in building and inspecting playgrounds. Um, the playground inspector is a particular certification that that exists. So those are the people that are doing the inspections. The inspections themselves. Um, I don't think he's inspecting the very newest playgrounds every, you know, every year. Um, so I could ask exactly how many it is, but the actual inspections are not super expensive. Um, and actually this, he did make the point at our last meeting, audit is an extremely exacting, time consuming and more expensive. In, thing and what we're actually doing is inspections yearly not not audits did okay. i miss any of your questions that's, that's good to know that audits are different than inspections yeah and so we, sh we should change this item actually and then um, i just wanted to make a quick comment on um the stratton playground just because i used to live up there my kids went to stratton um the entire playground is not old in fact most of it is new um a big section of it was replaced around the time that the school was being rebuilt right. So Shailene, there's I think, that are old. I just wanted to. There are some other people that want to speak, Shailene. Um, Daryl. Uh, yes, can I ask the um, the item for the uh, the safety inspections program? How is that? That doesn't seem to be a, a capital expense. That really seems like it should be an operating expense. I agree with you. And then uh, my. I'm sorry, Kate. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, I would probably kick that to Sandy or Timor, but you know, it is something we've discussed. You guys want to take it on uh, finance committee? Well, I think it's. Um, I mean, I would support Daryl on that. It looks to me like um, it's a recurring expense. It's for maintenance. It's not capital. It's, something that they, they should be budgeting for in their departments. I mean, if you, if, if you did that everywhere, you'd, you'd, your capital budget would be in a tighter condition. And then, then my follow-up question following up uh, on Charlie's point is, what's the go forward plan for this? Is the expectation that for Fiscal 23 and um, in the out years, how, is, how are these inspections going to get funded? Uh, this is an ongoing request in the capital plan. Could we get back to the committee, Mr. Chair? Uh, uh, yes, I, I think it's important to uh, have a discussion with the town comptroller and decide whether this is an operating expense or capital expense. I believe that this money is um, some for inspections, but it's also for actually doing the work on the- um, But that's maintenance. That's once maintenance. they find. Well, uh, I would respectfully request that we get some more clarification from Joe Connolly on the details. That's perfectly okay. Um, Daryl, are you done? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Alan Jones. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Following up on, on uh, some of this discussion and what Shailene said, uh, Sandy, as part of the follow-up, uh, could you ask for some of the inspection reports? Um, just sort of curious what problems there are, because it does seem like some of these are, are pretty new. And I know the playground near my house got wrapped in orange plastic fencing after the inspectors left, which of course was immediately removed by the kids. Um, but you know, I look pretty, I'm pretty good with nuts and bolts. And I, I, I was, 
I couldn't quite figure out what the problem was. Nothing was broken, nothing was rusty. Um, so I'd really like to see the, at least some representative reports from the inspectors. Uh, and I think it's shailing animated to make sure we're maybe not being requested to do work that doesn't need to be done. I do have the reports. You do have the reports. Uh, yeah. Could you share those with us, please? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not tonight, but great. Yeah, no, that, no, that... I, will, I will get them to you somehow. Okay. <laughs> For whatever. Uh, that, well, if you send, send them to Tara, she'll put them up on our website. Thank you. That would be great. Hi, that... sorry about that. My computer just decided to shut down for no reason at all. I'm back. Thank you. Alan, are you done? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will take that one. Thank you. you. Teamwork, go right ahead, please. Um, I'm sorry. I, I'm probably coming in a little bit confused because I don't know what, what I missed in the last three minutes or so. Um, um, we're through with, uh, Kate, are we through with recreation? Then I think we're over to Ida for libraries. Yep. Thank you. Hello again, Ida Cody, and I'll be speaking about the, um, on the libraries. Um, the libraries this year's are, um, very light compared to the last three years when we carried the, the two buildings at over $20 million. Um, as Timur has mentioned in the beginning of the presentation, we um, delayed the renovation slash construction of the Robbins and Fox Library. And we only have um, one request for fiscal year 23, and this is the Minuteman Library Network. Um, this is a recurring project, and um, it is for the acquisition of the equipment needed for connectivity and compatibility. Um, <clears throat> MNL is essential to providing um, cost efficient library services. And I would mention two uh, of the most important ones, um, the access, uh, the patrons have access to a rich collection through shared catalogs, um, mobile apps, and integrated the integrated library system, and also the value that it provides. Um, the um, residents have access to a wider world of resources, and, and this way we realize savings through collective purchases and share. This year's request is in the amount of 79,719. And it consists of hardware and licenses to operate this hardware. Um, we have this table here. Um, I found it interesting because um, the library director gathered the data as of uh, December, December 2021. And um, it's interesting to note that um, Arlington is, ranks number three in um, active library card holders. Now, um, I went a step further, further. I was just curious about Cambridge, how Cambridge is the fir in the first place. If you, and if you compare it to the population size, which is population of Cambridge population is one, 116,000, then they're only at 23%. If you look at Arlington, almost half of the population has um, a, a card holder for the Arlington, for, in the Miniman um, network. Um, and you can move on to the next slide. Um, this is again, as we mentioned, we had to um, remove the uh, construction of libraries due to the budgetary constraints and because we have this um, large current project going on. Uh, but this doesn't mean that we canceled this, the Fox and the library and the Robbins Library uh, permanently. We just had to delay the Fox Library for um, one year. Um, we kept this table to show that there is a um, really um, high demand for the Arlington Libraries. Um, we had a dip in fiscal year 22 and the library director estimates that for the fiscal year 22, we're gonna go back up to the uh, pre-pandemic levels and even higher. Um, one thing we've learned during the interview with Andrea Nikolai is that the um, 
the library budget bridges the digital um, equity um, divide. And what do, what do we mean by that? We all take everything for granted. We all have um, laptops, um, cell phones, tablets, but not all the houses have um, the equipment, all the equipment for all um, family members. Also, not everyone has unlimited uh, Wi-Fi, printing, um, scanning capabilities. Um, so this is where the library comes in and covers the gap and offers the residents a wide variety of um, e-services, if you like. Um, also, I was talking to Andrea and she told me that she has 20 hotspots that they're always booked and people can keep them for um, up to a week. Next slide, please. Since, so since we suspended uh, the libraries, uh, we have asked and Andrea to provide a list of projects that we would need um, immediate attention. And um, she gave us this list, which was um, initially part of the uh, re-imaging our library's building study that started, that started in 2017. And this is what she highlighted as the most important projects. Um, she needs to have the uh, teen um, room renovated um, as it tends to get crowded and um, the kids don't have enough space. Um, also, she wants to upgrade the lighting to address a uh, design weakness. And by this, what she means is um, the, the lighting has motion sensors. Um, and while they are achieving their goal of saving energy, um, many times they um, turn off and people think the, the room is closed, so they don't go in there. She also, they also need to renovate the first uh, floor bathroom and add two bathrooms on the second floor and the third floor. Um, she needs to replace the carpet um, at Robbins Library as uh, it approaches 30 years old. Um, she needs to add more meeting rooms for groups of four and six. And um, last but not least, um, she wants to create a laptop bar. And this would be similar to the ones um, in the airports. Uh, they will be uh, equipped with powered furniture because, and this would replace uh, the current um, study carols, uh, which are wooden and they're pretty much improvised to accommodate power. They, they have extension cords to be able to plug in the instruments. Um, she doesn't have estimates for this project, um, so she might have to go back to the architect for pricing, uh, but she will start introducing this project gradually beginning in 2024. And that's all I have for libraries. Thank you, Ida. Are there any questions for Ida? Oh, I have a couple. Um, so my recollection is that um, in, a, in prior presentations, the Robbins Library improvement was a higher priority than the Fox Library. Um, and there was a plan, um, conceptual plan as to what was going to get done. And there was also, um, if I recall correctly, a, a plan to get some funding from the um, Friends of the library and and also uh, applications for state funding, has that gone away? That whole concept? Um, no, that has not gone away. But uh, Andrea is not being uh, optimistic regarding the state grant. She doesn't think that we will be able to make the cut. Um, so uh, that again, it's not. We don't know if it, we can count on it as a funding source. Uh, Friends of Fox, they have raised some funds when they did the study. Um, I don't know how much would be committed to such a large project. And we don't know if it's gonna be <laughs> enough. So a second it's question is, you, you, mentioned the, you mentioned the, uh, the Fox Library. It sounded to me like it had become a higher priority than the Robbins. And um, the last time, uh, we saw anything about the Fox Library. It showed a building on Mass Ave that was sort of entirely renovated and 
and uh, devoted to uh, the Fox. And there was considerable discussion as to whether or not um, the library should be taking up for single use uh, prime commercial space and, and that there would have to be some effort by a combination of the planning department and maybe other parties in town to figure out how to utilize that space jointly for both library purposes and maybe other commercial or residential purposes. Is, is that a dead idea also? Um, I don't know if it's a dead idea, but I know that there was um, a discussion over whether we're going to have in, the initial study is for a standalone building. But then questions started to come as to should this be a, a standalone building or a mixed use building. We then decided that it would be wise to create a committee and we decide which direction we go. Uh, that, that committee hasn't been formed yet, at least not to my knowledge. Uh, but I don't think it is off the table. Sandy, do you have additional information on this? Sandy may, may be over at the uh, select board meeting, I'm not sure. No, I'm here, I'm done with the oh. select board. Okay. And my full commitment is to the <laughs> finance committee. Um, there's been some discussion about that idea that Charlie talked about among some people, but I don't know that there has been a fully committed, um, well, I forgot it, fully committed commitment to doing a sort of multi-use development there. Um, so I think in the short run, uh, the library would like to redo the Fox and do it just as a library. Um, and unless and until somebody comes up with a plan to do something else, uh, I don't think it's gonna move forward in, in that other direction. I would just also say that there are, there are a lot of downsides to doing uh, a some sort of multi-use development that I don't think we're gonna get into tonight with this discussion. I think that's gonna be on the scope of what we're talking about. Uh, well, I'd be glad to, if you'd like, but uh, let me just say it's not as easy or as straightforward as one might think. Um, so I would just also add that we did tell the library director um, that we didn't think we could go forward with the Robins as one whole big project. So either if I'm repeating what you've said, I don't think you, I am, but if I'm repeating what you said, I'm sorry. Uh, we've asked her to come back with a series of smaller uh, projects that are a much smaller price tag that maybe we'll be able to do a bit at a time. The Fox um, is one that I think would just be a standalone library project, even though there's some people would like to see it done differently. I don't think that's going to happen. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Sandy. So, uh, Timur, how many uh, more slides do we have here? Uh, we have one more, uh, so, uh, one more from Kate about the community center. We've got two from Sandy about uh, the town and buildings, a couple that Phyllis will cover about uh, debt rescissions, and then we summarize. Okay, so I'm going to, in the interest of time, I'm going to suggest to the members of the committee that we hold all questions until after all the remaining presenters have presented their material. So, I'm a, thanks. I'm going to jump in very quickly. This is sort of the wrap up of the community center renovations. Four goals achieved by the project modern expanded space on the ground and first floor for Council on Aging, the Senior Association, and community events, improvement of major building systems, including the HVAC, electrical bathrooms, and the exterior, relocation of health and human services, including veteran services on the second floor, and modernizing that building to be compliant. Uh, with the American, uh, the ADA Act, American for Dis uh, Disabilities Act. Um, so this was um, a tough project, uh, definitely suffered through pandemic timing, was delayed um, because of both supplies and manpower, uh, and also had some budget issues. They're summarized here. Um, there were two separate appropriations for it and actually a separate uh, appropriation for the ADA related work, but the light is at the end of the tunnel and um, it is uh, in its final stages and um, ready to be 
in use very soon. That's it for me. Sandy, these two are yours, I think. And you're muted. And that wraps up what I have to say. Uh, so we own um, a series of buildings. Um, three of them are under the jurisdiction of the uh, ARB under the Urban Renewal Fund. Uh, the Central School, which contains um, both some town departments and uh, tenants that uh, we lease to. Uh, 23 Maple, which currently houses the DPW uh, office staff, inspectional services, and some of IT. Uh, Jefferson Cutter House, uh, which is where the Chamber of Commerce is housed, the uh, Cutter Gallery and the Silas, Silas Dallin Art Museum. Um, the town itself owns uh, four buildings, the Parmenter School, which is half the Arlington Children's Center and the other half is the Monotoby Preschool. Uh, the so-called Dallin Library, which is uh, occupied by uh, ACMI, our community uh, cable uh, channel. Ryder Street, which we've talked about before, which is used by the DPW, and Mount Gilboa House, which had been rented out to a, uh, a tenant, a residential tenant, but is now vacant and is undergoing study as to what the best use of that house and or like location is. Next slide, please. Um, this summarizes um, what uh, our profit and loss is, so to speak, on an annual basis from each of these buildings, taking into account um, in the top sections, any debt that we've taken out on those buildings and in the bottom section, uh, taking, removing that debt just to see the purely operating expenses. Um, and what it really goes to show is things like the Parmenter School, um, although it used to bring in a lot more rent than it does now, basically sustains itself as does the Dallin Library. Those are the only two that really uh, are kind of making money for the town. Ryder Street, we don't rent out anymore, and Mount Gilboa, we don't rent out anymore. Um, and um, uh, the Urban Renewal Fund uh, lost a lot of its major tenants and has been in uh, the red for a few years, using up its, um, its fund balance, although we do project it to be back in the black for next year. Um, so um, anyway, like, next slide, please. Now it's over to Phyllis. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I have just a few slides um, and they're um, quick. Um, just to remind everyone, the slide 41 is the re is, thank you, the rescinding of prior borrowing. When the town meeting votes to um, authorize um, borrowing for projects, um, we um, sometimes, when we, when we don't borrow the full authorization as approved by town meeting, we and we have um, funding left on that authorization that hasn't been borrowed, but the project has been completed, we um, bring forward a motion to rescind that um, authorization of prior borrowing. And um, we review it every year and um, make a motion to uh, to you all to support at town meeting. And uh, this year we have no action um, to take. Uh, we do have some projects that are looking to complete in the near future. And um, so we, we may revisit this at a special town meeting or next year, but we don't have any um, prior borrowing authorization to rescind. So um, our motion is to um, have no action on this um, article. The um, next slide is uh, a reappropriation of 
borrowed funds. So unlike the previous slide where we are asking to rescind prior authorizations to borrow, these are funds that remain available to us that have not been needed for the project. So for example, um, uh, on the following page, the next slide, we have them broken down by the, the projects for which we had balances remaining. We actually borrowed this money, but we didn't need to spend it all. And so um, these are uh, five projects for which there were funds remaining and we're asking for a reappropriation re of these balances that remain from these completed projects and uh, are requesting that they be used to fund another project <laughs> on the next slide, which is the a capital request for the clerk's office to have election polling pads that would um, that have a five year, I believe a five year useful life and um, so we would need to um, raise the appropriation for this because we could reappropriate these remaining funds. Okay, back to me. Thank you, Phyllis. Uh, so after all this detail from us, we hope your heads are not um, exploding. This is a recap of a prior slide. Again, what we are asking you tonight, favorable action on our budget for the five-year plan and that $10,000 transfer. Uh, next slide, please. Here is the recommended vote in summary form and color code to your convenience. Uh, and just to be clear, the part that's boxed to the left, uh, which is the acquisition expense, that was what we went through in, in great detail, uh, department by department um, recap earlier. And I'd like to turn over now to Sandy to just take you through the remaining components. I'm gonna start on the right. Uh, we show for identification purposes, uh, the amount of uh, water sewer debt service. Uh, again, that is voted in the water sewer budget. Uh, it is um, kind of ancillary to uh, the capital plan. The rink debt service is listed in the uh, capital plan. Some of it is paid for directly by the um, general fund, and some of it is paid for by the um, the Rink Enterprise Fund itself. So the 56,000 is from the Rink Enterprise Fund and um, there's 11,000 that the general fund is subsidizing because frankly, the Rink Enterprise Fund can't pay for all of its capital expenses. The general fund debt service um, shows all the debt that we have issued to date and what the debt service is gonna be on that in FY23. The new is for any possible um, bands, as I talked about before, that we might issue, um, but we need to appropriate the money for now in case we do issue. And then that 11,150 is the general fund subsidy of some of the rink enterprise. Um, so we add all that up to the 714918 We then have the exempt debt. So we have a total debt service uh, in the general fund of 19144620 um, we then uh, have various other um, sources that we're using um, so that the, the money that is um, paying for that debt, uh, you have to vote to appropriate all the 19 um, so we can spend it, but there are various other sources. So there's a net um, general fund debt service of $18 million after we subtract out money from things like the ambulance fund Indenna Fund, Parking Fund, and Urban Renewal Fund, and our uh, carryovers. Um, down below, we then have how much cash capital um, we're spending. That is, again, offset by uh, some, uh, another source, the Sale of Assets Fund, to get a net general fund cash expense. So that we get at the very bottom corner of the page, 21949 893, which some people refer to as the Alan Jones number. Thank you, Sandy. Some people refer to as the number next to the little whale. I forget why we put the whale there. That's, that's it's the, the, it's the, it's the majestic output of the budget year. Go ahead, T-Mark. 
It's the majestic output of the budget year, or MOBI for short, but also known as the Alan Jones number. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <clears throat> um, thank you. Is this the uh, last slide? The next slide just re re uh, is if you, you also receive these attachments. These have more detail than what was covered in the presentation. And then final slide, please. We ask for your support of our recommendation. Thank you for your time and for your questions. Okay. So, uh, Daryl, what is your uh, thought on the question you raised about the um, uh, operating expense versus capital expense on those uh, parks and recreation issues? I still think it's an, it's more it's more appropriately an operating cost. It sounds like it's um, an ongoing um, activity rather than acquisition of any kind of or betterment of any kind of asset. Altasi, do you have a thought? Oh, John Ellis, your hand is up. Uh, it is, but I don't want to leave this discussion. I'll let you finish this discussion because it's kind of a different, okay. slightly different topic. But thank you, Al, Al Tassi, Do you have any thoughts on that? I, I, I agree with with Daryl that uh, you know a yearly inspection um, is is not a capital cost. On the other hand, if there are actually physical work being done uh, in that, maybe it changes it a little bit. But simply an inspection is is an operating cost probably should be in the uh, uh, Parks and Recreation budget in DPW. Um, I, I can't imagine that it can't be done by a junior engineer uh, who just gets some additional training in park uh, safety. Okay, well, so, Al, I don't think we should be managing the department um, how they do these things, but I, I, would, say, I, I would say your point about it being a, an operating expense more than a capital expense is, is well made. Yeah. Um, so I, I would like to suggest that we um, do the following, and that is uh, vote the rescission article, vote the $10,000 for the, uh, I mean, I'll accept recommendations for motions on the rescission article, the um, $10,000 uh, on the perpetual care uh, article, and um, the reappropriation article that the town treasurer just uh, mentioned to us. I think on the um, the overall capital budget and capital plan, I think this is an issue that should be resolved offline. I don't think we can resolve it tonight. And that is that the next time that we could take this up would be next Monday because of the, the um, open meeting law notice requirements. So um, Daryl, can I ask that you and, um, Who's, who's, who has the uh, parks, the uh, parks and recreation budget? Wanda. Do you mean on, on our side or on your side? Oh uh, no, on our side, the finance committee. Who's yes, it? yes, it was. It's, that's what I thought. It's you, you and Andy, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So Daryl and Wanda, if you can get together with Sandy and Timur between now and next Monday, and determine what we should be doing about that. Um, article uh, that that those figures, and I think there are um, at least two outcomes. One is that they should be changed, and the other is that maybe it's justified. But I think we ought to find out with a little bit more detail as to whether or not that's the case. Al Tassi, I'm sorry, John John Ellis, you had your hand up first. I had a question related to the perpetual care fund transfer, and since the treasurer is here, I hoped um, she could answer it. I looked at the fund balance, um, the DPW director provided it before our meeting, and it was uh, just under uh, 8 million uh, last year, and now it's over 9 million. So it, it, it grew by um, you know, over 10% the year, uh, over a million dollars. And so it's a two-part question. One is, uh, why? what's the reason that the CARE fund uh, increased by that amount? Is it mostly investment gains or is it sale of lots? And the Second question is, could that money be used? Uh, could more of that money be used than the token $10,000? Um, 
the trust funds did um, gain interest um, over the over the fiscal year, um, especially when they're sizable uh, as that trust fund is. Um, and uh, there are contributions into that trust fund from the sale of properties at the cemetery as well. Did I not answer your question? I think the, the third part of this question was, can it be used for anything else? And I think the answer is no. Those Correct. are the trust yeah. funds. That's correct. It can only be used for perpetual care of the uh, of the cemetery. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything, anything else on that, John? Is that it? Okay. Al Tassi. Um, I was just going to make a motion uh, to, to save a little time on uh, positive action for those four areas that you mentioned, Mr. Chairman. I could only come up with three, but. If we, I had three, just three. I'm sorry? There was just three. Oh, okay. Then I'd like to make uh, that we vote favorable action on $10,000 from perpetual care in the appropriate article uh, to go to uh, cemetery. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, for uh, capital, that we vote no action on the rescission of prior borrowing and that we vote favorable action on the tra transfer of leftover amounts. There are so it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion on those three items? Hearing none, uh, we'll take a vote. Grant Gibeon? Yes. Shane Blundell? Yes. John Ellis? Yes. Micaiah Healy? Yes. Brian Beck? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Shailene? Yes. Daryl? Yes. And he's not here. Alan Jones? Yes. George Koser? Yes. Bill Keller? Yes. Al Tassi? Yes. Wanda Nascimento? Yes. Christine Deschler? Yes. And Carmen's not here. David McKenna? He's not here. Yes. Oh, you are here. Okay. Thank you. David's here. Uh, yes. Okay. So there, uh, I think Dean's not here and Arif is not here, right? And Annie's not here. Yeah, okay. So uh, those three items have passed unanimously. Um, and uh, Daryl and Wanda um, are gonna follow up on um, the, the issue of the uh, recreation department uh, inspections and maintenance. Um, uh, I'd like to thank the Capital Planning Committee for a really great uh, presentation Tremendous amount of work went into not just the presentation, but into all those items um, during the course of the year. I know it's a tough year, uh, been a tough year to work through these various issues. Uh, I know that last year when we had the increase in the cost of the DPW building, we knew that it was gonna create a lot of pressure on future capital budgets, uh, but they've, uh, at least in my opinion, done a really great job. So, um, I think we'll have to uh, save the minutes and various other items that we had on the agenda uh, for uh, Wednesday night. Um, and is, is there any further uh, comment on the capital budget that anyone wants to make? Okay, in that case, uh, I think a motion to adjourn is in order. Mr. Chair, does that mean we're not gonna take up the um, revolving fund item tonight? Uh, not on the agenda. I don't think we can. So we oh, need to. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't realize. I thought you were going to. Okay. No, I said um, I, we'll do it either. I think, I, I don't know whether it got onto the Wednesday, Wednesday agenda well, or not. I, it's on Wednesday? The, revolt, oh. the, the um, private way, yes, it's on Wednesdays. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else? I just wanted to thank you on behalf of the Capital Planning Committee for the opportunity to present and for all your questions. Uh, you're very welcome, and apparently we're going to give you the opportunity to present again. So that's uh, hopefully very briefly shows you how much we like mm -hmm. you. you know? uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Motion to second. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Uh, Thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate it. Good evening. Good evening.